stool and using my phone because I am the spitting image of professionalism. <laughs> so, I have a favorite Wikipedia article. I know that's kind of weird what I do. My favorite Wikipedia article is actually less of an article and more of a list. Wikipedia has a lot of fucking lists. They have so many lists that they have lists of lists. They have so many lists that I swear to God there is a list of lists of lists, which is just a perfect pinnacle of organization that would make any bureaucrat just pop a boner right then and there. <laughs> My favorite list is the list of unusual deaths. There's a lot of weird shit going on in here. And I read this list with a quest. I figured, there's somebody out there who had the unluckiest death in the world. And this page has to contain it, right? So let's go on this magical journey. We're starting at the very beginning, of, uh, back in ancient Greece, about 6th century BC. This is so far back that uh, raping little boys was not just allowed, but actually encouraged. So if that puts things into perspective here, you didn't even have to be part of the Catholic Church. How times change. <laughs> Our first head on the block here is a Greek lawmaker named Carondas. Uh, he created a law banning people from bringing weapons into the assembly, which is where they gathered and did like their legal shit and all that. And the punishment for this was death. Fair enough. One day, Herondas was out hunting, and then immediately after that, decided to go to the assembly, not, reala not realizing he had a knife in his belt. So he did the only sane thing and committed suicide right there on the spot. This is also the last recorded time that a politician was actually held to their words. So this is a... <laughs> Next up on the block, we got another Greek boy here. His name was Aeschylus. This is why I have my phone. I'm good at many things. Memorizing ancient Greek names, not one of them. Aeschylus was bald. Like, really fucking bald. He was so bald that an eagle confused his shiny head for a rock and dropped a turtle on him, killing him instantly. <laughs> Eagles do that so they can uh, break the turtle shell and then get to the nice, delicious, gooey innards right there. <laughs> Enough with the Greeks, let's move on to the Chinese. Uh, Qin Shi Huang was the first Chinese emperor of all time. He wanted to be immortal. He wanted to live forever. So he took a bunch of pills filled with mercury and died. <laughs> now, I wrote down Qin Shi Huang. Uh, this is the first noted time that I found it. The Chinese really fucking love their mercury for some reason. Uh, even on like parts of rural China today, you can buy fucking mercury pills to try to make yourself into a god, basically. Doesn't fucking work. Stop trying, guys. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have King Charles II of Navarre, which is a which was a small country that is now part of Spain. Uh, he was getting up in his years, right, and his body was starting to fail, and he didn't have too much control over his limbs anymore. And so, his physician made the weirdest suggestion I've ever heard. His supposed treatment was to be sewn up into like this big, stupid burrito, kind of. But instead of a tortilla, it's a linen cloth soaked in brandy. And so it's middle of the night, and he has his attendant finishing up. She's almost done. She gets up to the top, the point where she has to like sew the blanket back together. And she notices a loose uh, string coming off of the blanket. And she had a pair of scissors. She could have just cut the fucker right off. Nope, she went for the candle. <laughs> Cloth soaked in brandy, meets candle, boom, fried king right there. Uh, he burst into flames, and she was so scared that she just like bolted out of the room, didn't even fucking tell anyone. And so I like to imagine in the morning somebody walked in to find this charred burrito of dead king, and they're just like, what the fuck happened here? Uh, this next guy is kind of my idol, uh, George Plantinet, the Duke of Clarence. In 1478, he was executed, but he got to pick how he wanted to be executed, and so he was drowned in a barrel of wine. I would like to take inspiration from that, but you gotta up the end. Give him like a barrel of whiskey or something, now we're talking. Uh, Hans Steininger, a German Duke, had a really fucking long beard. It was measured at four and a half feet long, and he died when he stepped on it, tripped, and broke his neck. 
Henry Taylor. We're, get, we're getting up towards uh, more modern times. This is actually early 1900s, I believe. Uh, Henry Taylor was a pallbearer at a funeral in London. Uh, as they were carrying the coffin, uh, he tripped on a rock, let go, and this spooked everybody else carrying the coffin. So they dropped it too, and it crushed him and killed him. <laughs> I really want to know like the policy for shit like this. Like, can you just like open it up and then just like throw them on top? <laughs> two, two Brits, one coffin. It's not fucking hell. Now this list is this list is not limited only to humans. Uh, there are two, count them, two animals on this list. It gets better. Uh, both of these animals are elephants. And it gets even better. Both of these elephants were executed. <laughs> Topsy the elephant in 1903 killed a spectator. And they're just like, okay, we gotta get rid of this fucker. And it takes a lot to kill an elephant. So we went from poisoning to trying to strangle it. And what finally did it in was electrocution. This was filmed. This is quite possibly the first recorded death in history, and it's us zapping an elephant to death. Thirteen years later, Mary the Elephant killed a trainer, and apparently they were just like, okay, we gotta up the fucking ante on this one, we already roasted one of these things. So, Mary was hanged from a fucking crane. <laughs> This is a big ass elephant. It was like the biggest crane they had at the time. They hanged that son of a bitch real good. So, I reached the end of the list. And I realized I hadn't quite found my answer. I hadn't found the unluckiest death. Because we had got a deep dive for that one. To understand the context to what makes this death so great, we got to look at all the context leading up to it. This is my candidate for the unluckiest, most miserable son of a bitch to ever walk this earth. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Thomas Midgley Jr. Midgley was born in 1889. He graduated from the University of Cornell in 1911. He went into uh, mechanical engineering. Uh, five years later, he got a job at General Motors, and his destructive reign had begun. <laughs> Now, Thomas Midgley became famous for two major inventions, both of which wound up being banned in the United States. So we're kind of off to a good start here. The first of these, the first of his Eureka moments, comes five years later, 1921. Thomas Midgley creates an invention that he creatively named Ethel, let's say. Ethel was an additive for gasoline to try to reduce engine knocking, which is like fuel like combusts before it's supposed to and it's not fucking good for it. I don't know. I say he named it creatively because nowadays we know it more as T-E-L or tetraethyl lead. Thomas Midgley invented the practice of putting lead in gasoline. Uh, it, took, it took until uh, 1977 for the EPA to ban its use in the United States, but Midgley didn't care about that point. He'd been dead for over 30 years. So, Along comes a Dr. Patterson. Patterson is convinced, okay, this shit can't be good. We gotta find something wrong with this. So he conducts this study. He wants to pick a big city, a lot of people, a lot of cars, very condensed area. So he does it in Chicago. And he finds that in the time since the use of leaded gasoline had become more popular, uh, crime rates had gone up and grades in schools had gone down. Basically, Midgley was responsible for making the entire city of Chicago angry and stupid. <laughs> he presented this to the EPA in the 40s, and they're just like, ah, ah. and then 30 years later, they finally got around to actually doing something. Uh, Patterson was also dead at this point. It took a different dude doing his second completely different study to find out that, hey, maybe having massive clouds of lead in our cities isn't that great of an idea. <laughs> So, 0 for 1, great start. We're rocking and rolling here. Uh, about 10 years or so later, uh, Midgley invent pioneered the use of chlorofluorocarbons. Uh, you might know it today better as freons. Freons are refrigerants. You know, like your car air conditioning, when it runs out and charge it up, you're using freons. So, I said that there, both of his inventions were banned in the United States. Gotta explain that. There are many, many, many types of freons invented over the years, and today we have the quote-unquote safer ones. As far as I'm aware, all of the freons that Midgley personally developed are banned in the United States, so I do get to check that one off the list. 
They were banned because they were the leading cause of ozone damage. So making a city angry got to up it up, got to up it to punching a fucking hole in the ozone layer and trying to incinerate the earth essentially. <laughs> So, 0 for 2, doing great. Uh, how can we up this? Uh, so, Thomas Midgley's getting into his 50s-ish. Uh, many decades of handling massive amounts of lead are unsurprisingly not doing too good for him. And so, time waits for nobody. And Thomas Midgley is no exception. It's time for him to take his bow and shuffle off the stage. How do you think it's going to happen? Lead poisoning? Yeah, that'd be easy, wouldn't it? I'd just say that, walk off the fucking stage. No, this is where Midgley's misfortune kind of cascades into absurdity. Because in 1940, he was diagnosed with polio. Uh, if you guys aren't aware, polio was a terrible disease. We've uh, pretty much completely eradicated it with the use of vaccines. Vaccinate your kids. That's not a joke. There is no punchline. I'm just telling you straight up, vaccinate your fucking kids. So, with the lead and the polio, Thomas Midgley is now severely disabled, and pretty much completely paralyzed. Uh, he's basically completely bedridden. Uh, he's incapable of getting himself out of bed. He has to be physically lifted and then set down into a chair so that he can go out and explore the world that he's almost destroyed like eight times over by now. And I like to think he was doing this when the switch flipped in his head. He's just like, there's gotta be a better way. It's like one of those shitty TV infomercials. So, he goes back to the drawing board. One last time. He's going to do it right this time. He's not going to make an entire city angry and stupid. He's not going to blow a hole in the ozone layer and incinerate the earth. With his final invention, Thomas Midgley is going to sing the greatest swan song known to man. So what does he come up with? He comes up with a bed with a system of wires and pulleys attached to it, so that he'd be strapped into it, it would lift him up, swivel him out, and then set him down into a chair. He still needed help to do this. He couldn't do this himself. And it worked really well for him for a couple years until one morning in 1944, when the machine broke and strangled Midgley to death. <laughs> curtain call, baby. That is my argument as to why Thomas Midgley was the most misfortunate person to ever live and the unluckiest person to ever die. My name is Julian Hoffman. That's all I fucking got for you. Thank you, guys.